I'm an American. We are in America. I'm going to speak from that perspective. It is not unique to America, but this certainly would not work with the French. And that is <laughs> that Americans are so grateful that you bother to speak English at all, that we are not. It just, it's just like, thank you. You also know that Americans don't necessarily prefer perfect English. We like street talk. So our bar is not high. And I teach at the Kennedy, oh, I'm not berating Americans. I'm incredibly charmed by this. I was an English major. I can do better. But I love this about my culture, where we are interested in what people have to say, and if we can penetrate the phraseology or penetrate the accent or penetrate the, the, a language barrier, we're, we're content driven, not phraseology driven. It, you're, you're thinking about something that is not interesting to us. And it is an impediment. In fact, most people, and, and you know this too, Dahlia, because you see this with others who, who speak a different language poorly, they work, they, they're, they're tr translating it in their head and then they're fixing it in their head and it's boring. And w I can't even get the idea. So we would much rather have an error-ridden phrase, an error-ridden hour of phrasing that we get the content to than a long, slow, painful struggle for articulation when actually we're doing better as listeners than that. So it's not that I'm not sympathetic. It's that I, I, don't, I don't honor it. I don't respect it as a barrier. And I would like it to go down. Um, certainly, you have seen classmates or in some other setting, people who just often in more casual conversation, they just stopped thinking about it. They were so caught up in what they were saying. And sure enough, there were errors in the language. But sure enough, people were fine. 